So yeah, so we're going to learn about how we take those gates from last week, and now we're going to apply them to quantum circuits, and we're going to learn something cool about the different types of circuits that exist, and then some things you can do with it. If you remember the week one, this is part three. I'll do my little, I guess we're already past the intro, but here we are. <laughs> uh, quantum computing part three. And uh, <clears throat> so yeah, so if you are following along on Twitch with me right now, you can hit exclamation mark Discord, Discord, one word, exclamation mark Discord, and join the Discord. I have all of the notes for these on uh, the Discord, so you don't have to uh, you don't have to write notes. You can just follow along if that's what helps you learn. Um, but they are, it was harder to get them online today, so they're a little bit sloppier, and some of them are pretty faint because I had to use pen for some of this. So um, I apologize about that. Hopefully you can just fill in the things that, that you can't see. Um, next up is uh, if you're on YouTube, all that information is down in the description below. If you uh, are unable to attend in person, I put all of these on YouTube, uh, exclamation mark YT, and you can get caught up. Um, and yeah, so if you'd like to... Uh, if you'd like to get caught up, I have parts one and two of quantum computing. I also have several other discussion sections, uh, sessions like path integration, uh, following Shrednicki, and uh, Lagrangian mechanics, following Taylor. So there's a bunch of stuff there if you're interested. <laughs> yes, it's free. It's completely free. Uh, this one, usually I let you guys pick discussion sessions, sections, but this I need for my uh, degree. So I, I'm going to pick it, and I pick this. So we do this, okay? Um, so part one, like I said, was bits. Part two was quantum gates. So let's. The heavy water again. <laughs> I have you know, I had a physical today, and my doctor said I was right where I should be with weight. So there. Um, <clears throat> but to answer your question, yes. <laughs> um. So let's see here. So we learned last week about how operators and quantum computing works. Uh, how quantum gates can uh, manipulate bits of information that we call qubits because they're quantum bits of information. So much like we we like the authors of the book we're following, which is Nielsen and Chang. Uh, the Dr. Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> no, the authors of uh, the book like to draw a lot of analogies between quantum computing and classical computing. But we are going to be sticking. But I, I don't know a lot about classical computing, so. Um, we, we drew the analogies that we could. Hold on, I gotta change this back so I can see who's hanging out with us now. A Spider Queen, thank you for the follow. Um, and yeah, and welcome Discord if you were able to hop on there and get the notes. Will this be on the final? Yes. Um, <laughs> of course, this is just free learning, so there's no final or test or anything. I'm, high, I'm, I'm strongly open to uh, suggestions or opinions if you think I did something wrong. If you're having trouble following something, please hop in the Discord and let me know. Um, okay, so last time we talked about quantum... Uh, we talked about quantum gates. We talked about how they were similar to they're similar to quantum operators that uh, are used to manipulate bits of information. So we had a couple examples, right? We had the not gate, which we wrote as a big X. So the not gate would take a zero qubit and send it to a one qubit, right? Or if we wanted to, we could take a one qubit and send it to a zero qubit. Um, we also talked about controlled not gates, which we're going to revisit here in a little bit in, in terms of a diagram. Um, but before then, I should mention, we also, so we saw these as vectors. So if you're not very comfortable with the bracket notation, the Dirac notation, then you could consider these as vectors. Remember the zero, you can write as one zero, and the one state you can write as zero one. So yeah, so the zero, the zero bit we can write as one zero, the one bit we can write as zero one, and then the x's we could write, or the, excuse me, the gates we could write as operators. Eventually you'll get used to, uh, eventually you'll get used to the Dirac notation, the bras and cats, and this is, will just kind of come more naturally, and you, you won't necessarily need to write everything out as matrices and vectors, but for now, if that's what comes naturally to you, if that's your ability to translate this language, so be it. So then this, it's easy to see that if you were to take this matrix and multiply this vector by it, then you're going to get this vector on the out, on the out, on the output, right? And that's how we talk about 
the uh, the computer the quantum computers, right? So there's another one that's very relevant that we won't see until later today. So I'll write this one up now. But is the Hadamard gate, right? And the Hadamard gate was basically taking a qubit and putting it into a superposition of both states. So we had this one over root two, which was a normalization factor. Uh, Got to keep everything normal because Lord knows us physicists aren't. <laughs> Uh, and then if you put the Hadamard gate on the 1 bit, it would get 1 over the square root of 2 times the 0 bit minus the 1 bit. So this would be the superposition of the 0 and 1 states as, um, as a single qubit, right? Okay, now, um, there was a two other things that we did that are very important to remember. Uh, firstly, that the... There was a special emphasis last week on reversibility due to the unitary nature of quantum gates, right? The quantum gates inside a quantum computa computation, right, are unitary. So these gates are unitary. And that's important because we need this normalization so that percentages don't add up to over 100%. We want to make sure that percentages add up to 100%. Or as Admiral Entropy says, you could say it the other way around. The fact that we have this normalization, the fact that percents don't add up to uh, something other than 100% is why we have unitarity, right? So we talked about that last week, and that's an important to remember. And lastly, I want to make sure that we drew a distinction because it's going to be very relevant this week about how classical, or excuse me, uh, measurement gates are non-unitary gates, right? They are measurements. So yeah, so those are the things, is measurement gates are by nature non-unitary, they collapse qubits to, to classical style bits and uh <laughs> and yes it's uh it's um it can it can yeah that's what it does but the, inside the quantum computation gates are unitary and that's very important no lag okay cool <clears throat> thank you dear okay now quantum circuits this is a fun one i like when diagrams represent equations it just makes everything look so much nicer and neater. Actually, it might even be easier to follow along with the notes this time around, especially because there's the I already drew all the pictures in the notes. Um, but like last time, so we talked about the difference between wires and operators in quantum computers and how wires are, or classical computers, excuse me, how wires were used to transport transport the information from one thing to from one one uh, gate to another gate, right? And then. Uh, we didn't really talk about wires in quantum computers, like what they actually look like, but it's easy to think of a wire in the following way, and this is the way that uh, Nielsen and Chang put it. Um, but wires are really what the passage of time, right? So you don't necessarily need to move a qubit to, and this is, I mean, this is in essence what I'm studying. So if you ask me a question about like, how does this work? Like, how does time work? <laughs> then I will happily tell you that I don't know, but I hope to. Um, but basically, the wires or the transporting of information can happen inside of a quantum computer by uh, either time, just passage of time, and let something happen to the bit one step after another step. And um, secondly, sorry if I missed a question. If we have non-unitary processes, quantum mechanics... System, so if you have a non unitary, though, do see. Yeah, and the, I guess the idea behind the measurement gate, maybe this will make it a little bit simpler, Cosmolano, is if you could apply an a infinite amount of measurements to the measurement gate, you would regain unitarity. Like that's the nature of the of the of the thing of the of the beast is that if you could apply a thousand measurements, you would get every you would get the per, you would get an exact wave function. You'd gain all of the information from inside, so you'd retain unitarity. But that's not the case. What we get. Uh, but Admiral Entropy's answer is great as well. Um, Ad Admiral Entropy is one of our quantum computer uh, experts. You don't know what I, I mean by that information. Yeah, so, um, so Nielsen and Chang say something about it when it comes to the teleportation. And it's basically that, like, you don't know. The, re the real reason why you don't preserve unitarity is because you can't tell me what alpha and beta is by just measuring something. You can measure something a finite amount of time. doesn't matter how many times. You can't tell me exactly what alpha and beta are from a measurement. But if you were to measure it an infinite amount of times, then you can tell me what alpha and beta is. You, require, you recover all of the information from the, bit, from the qubits inside, and the measurement gates are, by, by the nature, unitary. unitary. So it's basically making them non-unitary by allowing an infinite amount of measurements. 
Yeah, and then so that, <laughs> and then here we go with the many worlds thing. Okay, okay, let's focus. <laughs> um, okay, entangling the the universal waveguide. Okay. So, um, so we didn't really talk about wires in the classical or in the quantum sense, but again, it's the passenger, <laughs> the passenger time, or you could talk about a physical particle, uh, like a photon moving from one location of space to another, something along those lines. Really, how we're going to be talking about wires communicating information from one gate to the next gate. <laughs> um, so. Uh, so let's just, there is like a little subtle thing. So by, so I, I should tell you if you're looking at gates in a computer, there is, uh, or in a literature, there, unless otherwise specified, it is to be assumed that the left-hand side of the, of the quantum gates, everything is, uh, a zero bit. Um, and then usually that's when you start your process of, of getting it into whatever state you want it. But in, uh, for our intensive purposes, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to start with, a left-hand side of the, the quantum circuit, obviously, but it, most of them won't start in a zero state. But I'll explain to you what state they are when we start. And then they also say that the literature doesn't follow that rule anyways, but it's kind of courteous and, and normal that if you're just going to start with a quantum circuit, you start with zeros on the left-hand side, zero bits, and then you start entangling them and getting them into different states that you want. Um, let's talk about our first quantum circuit. Okay, so again, I'm going to start with one where I'm not in a zero, zero state. So we're going to assume that there's some stuff happening beforehand, whatever is required to get us into a system where we have an A state and a B state. So it could be zero, zero. It doesn't matter. That's the point. We want it to be generalized. <clears throat> and then we have, like we saw last week, we have three controlled not gates. So if you remember from controlled not gates, you have a... Oh, we got to remind my... A control gate <coughs> and a what's the other gate <laughs> I remember that you made fun of me last week because I forgot it was a control gate <coughs> but you have a control and a I want to say test let me see what is it I want to get the right words oh target there it is so they have a control and a target okay so the target should be easy to remember now that I I see it because it's the little crosshairs. So you have a control and then a target. And what happens is the control will read the bit. And if it's a zero bit, nothing happens. If it's a one bit, then it will flip the target bit. So if the target bit is zero and A is a one, so A comes through and hits this control, it's a one. This will flip this bit from a zero to a one. So now here the state is now one, one, whereas here the state was one, zero. Okay? <clears throat> Yeah, Target and hey, Dr. Derp, good to see ya. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here's the deal. So this is a series of three C not gates. Three C not gates. So now let's talk a little bit about this. Let's make a table, an input output table. And um, let's see what happens if we uh, send in some certain a certain series of gates. So let's see. So for the first gate, let's send in a zero, zero. So if we send it a zero, zero, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to go through here and nothing's going to happen, really. You hit this and it's not going to switch anything. It's going to go to the target. This one's a zero, also not going to do anything. This is a zero, not going to do anything. So it's going to come through and come right out. Okay? Zero, zero. Now, let's do the next one. Okay? So this one, let's do zero, one. Okay? So now you have zero and one here. So now if they come through, they hit the first gate. We have a control not, so the control hits a zero, so nothing happens to the target. Okay, so this stays the remain. It's still zero, or still zero, one. But now here, we hit the control, so this one flips. So now we have this state here is a one, one. Okay, what happens then when we hit this last control gate, it, control not gate, this is now one, because here the, 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 uh, the state is one, one. This one hits this control and flips this qubit. So our output state is one zero, okay? Now, let's keep going. One zero. So the one, so now we have a one and a zero. So the one comes through, hits the control. This one flips, now the state's one one. Hits the control, this one flips, now it's one zero. This is a zero, so it goes through the control and this passes out and we get zero one, okay? Again, that was kind of fast. Let me go through it again. So now we have a one and a zero for our two qubits. 
The one comes through here, it hits the control, so the B will flip, so now it's 1-1. One, one. So start as 1-0, now it's 1-1. One, one. Then this B is a 1, it hits the control and flips the A, so now it's 1-0. And then A is a 0, so it hits the control, it does not flip, and you exit as a 0-1. Lastly, we have a 1-1. One, one. So you guys know what I'm going to ask you. Again, 1-1, one, one, uh, well, we'll do it. I'm going to ask you when we're done with this, what does this gate look like? Okay? You got to tell me what this gate looks like. Or, I'm sorry, yeah, the series of these three gates. What does that look like? A different gate. Um, so let's do the 1-1. One, one. So now the 1 hits this control, so this one flips, so now it's 1-0. Zero. 0 hits this control, nothing happens up here. And then we have 1 hit here, so this one flips back to 1. So as it exits, it's 1-1. One, one. So if we look at our in and out table, we have a 0-0-0-0. Zero, 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 zero. We have a 0-1-1-0. One, 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 zero. We have a 1-0-0-1, zero, zero, one, and then we have a 1-1-1-1. One, 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 one. What does this look like? Can you write the intermediate states of the bits in the diagram? There's no XOR in quantum computing, Tyrion. But you're, I think you're close. I'm pretty sure you're close. Let's do, uh, yeah, I could do one intermediate one. So let's take this one. <clears throat> so 1-1 one, one hits this control gate, and it becomes 1-0. Hits this control gate, but this zero is here, so this one stays the same. Hits this one, now this is this A is a one, so this is gonna flip from zero, and it's gonna flip back to one one. Okay? So those are the intermediate steps. Looks like an exchange. Very good, it's a swap. So this is nothing fancy nothing more than a swap gate. So if we wanted to rewrite the swap gate, or we wanted to to pictorially depict the pictorially what <laughs> we want to do a swap gate that's what it looks like <laughs> so that's a swap gate basically what you can do is um is you can just swap the bits right and that's what it looks like so the three control knots in essence swaps there's nothing about the zero or one that separates it right there's nothing about these zeros that separate them they're pretty much the same thing so you get zero zero here and zero zero here it's the same process of swapping it's not going to do anything it's not going to change anything um, you can build XOR with not or OR gates. Yeah, but not in quantum computing. In quantum computing, an XOR gate is non-reversible, so you can't have it. So you can have a controlled knot, which is similar to the XOR gate, but it's not the XOR gate. It's similar, but it's different in a, in a few a few degrees. Uh, I'm not even sure how to build an OR gate with this. <laughs> I don't know if you can build an OR gate with this. Instead of OR, we have C knots. Okay. So those are your first diagrams. We just saw how you can express a series of three C knots as a swap. A swap being the same thing, right? And that's just like a subset of, of diagrams, okay? Funzy, funzy, funzy. Let's get my eraser and keep moving. <clears throat> Ooh. You guys didn't see it, but I did run into a desk. I didn't just groan like an old man for no reason. <clears throat> okay. So what's an X uh, uh, fun thing? So there's a few things. Oh, we can write it out as direct products. This one, uh, I'm a little bit hesitant to understand, so I'm not, I will write it. If you are mathematically inclined and you understand this stuff, then good for you. Um, Tyrion has, uh, he explained it to me um, in a modulus two way, but I don't know if I can explain that. So I would ask Tyrion in Discord if you would like it explained further. He is one of our, uh, Brilliant computer people uh, in the uh, in the community and on Discord, but this is how you talk about it in uh, direct product and or direct sum and modulus two. <clears throat> I don't even know if I'm saying those words correctly, but he explained it to me and it made a lot of sense to me. I just don't know if I can explain it out loud, so I will defer you to him for that explanation. Um. Modulo 2 addition. Very good. But then you need more bits in your program. Modulo 2 addition. Oh. Right. <clears throat> I believe you. <laughs> Modulo 2 addition meaning that you can't have... So let's see. So if you had 0 plus 0 equals 0. 0 plus 1 equals 1. 1 plus 0 equals 1. And then 1 plus 1 is equal to 0. So... 
the way that I read Modular 2 Edition is you're not allowed to have anything left over other than uh, anything greater than one. So, like, you have to divide out, and if there's anything... Yes. Think remainder. Yes, I know. I, I understand what the modulus is, <laughs> but I'm not as 100% what, what you're dividing by. Two, maybe? So if you don't get a remainder, then it's zero. If you get a remainder, it's one. Or it's the remainder itself is how the modulus works. Um, but yeah. All right, so let's see here. Let's keep moving, though. <sighs> see, I told you he's good at explaining it. Um, yeah, let's erase the direct product. It's in the notes again, um, but yeah. And it'll also be on the VOD if you guys want to look at it more. <clears throat> it's associative. It's associative. I don't know if inclusive, exclusive is the right word. Um, I don't know. Again, unfortunately. Not my... Whoa, I almost fell. Not my area of expertise. Okay, so let's talk about... Uh, if you are in a... If you are a classical computer person, you will probably have a few things that you might be wondering about. And I will talk to you about those now because uh, Nielsen and Chang did talk about this stuff. It's important for you guys to know them. I don't know them very well, but it's, like I said, it's important to know. So there's a few things in classical, a few classical friends that don't show up in quantum computing that you should be interested in. Uh, loops. <clears throat> so loops, we call the circuits in quantum computers acyclic. So they have to run in one direction. They do not, you can't siphon in information back and then replay it which i find kind of odd because you can do machine learning in <clears throat> i don't know yeah cyber i'm not sure um i i just know that it is associative which means you can do that fancy switching it around so you can keep the b out and then so a the direct sum of a with a direct sum b you can move that parenthesis around uh slippy key welcome to the channel but i don't know what i don't know what the exclusivity means um but <clears throat> Yeah, so loops, quantum circuit, is acyclic. Uh, you cannot send information back into it. Um, now, that's not to say that you can't send quantum, or you can't send the measurements back in, but that's a different thing, so I won't talk too much about that. There's a fan in, which is basically splitting a wire so that... Um, splitting a wire so that it is, I don't know, you guys probably know this more than I do, um, so that it's bitwise or it's an or uh, style of function. Yes, associative. You can move the parentheses around, which is why B is good. But exclusive, maybe, maybe Tyrion, you can tell me what exclusivity is in, that, in those terms. Maybe just you can't move the parentheses around. Is that the only thing it is? I'm not understanding the math. Okay, so Fanon is just splitting a wire. You're splitting, um, you know, it's called splitting bitwise or... But it's non-reversible, so we don't have it. It's not part of quantum computing. Fan out is the in, uh, the inverse of this, and um, it's about copying bits, copying qubits. Copying qubits is a big no. You may not copy in qubits. That's what we're going to talk about next. You may absolutely not copy qubits. For shame for even trying. Okay? And then, um, and then, I think that's it. Those three things. So loops, fan in, and you cannot copy qubits, which we're going to talk about very soon and kind of show why. There is another uh, thing that we should be talking about, which is a controlled, now this is a separate thing. This is uh, not, this is one thing. This is another thing. A controlled U. Uh, gate, which a controlled U gate is basically like the controlled not gate, except now instead of having um, having a not gate, it's really saying any unitary gate under some control. So you have a control, and then you have a uh, target um, U. Um, so the unitary gate, so <clears throat> it's just a control gate. So you have a control, you test the particle. If it's a zero or the qubit, it's a zero. It goes through. If it's a one, it still goes through. But this time, it uh, it kicks on this unitary operator. Now, um, let's talk about measurement gates. 
Okay, now this is what all the fuss is about. Measurement gates, this non-unitary operation. It's, it's really just taking a measurement, right? It's looking at the object. It's having it interact with a magnetic field or something like that. They're basically going to snap it out of its whatever state it's in and into a classical bit that you can measure. Okay, hence measurement gate. Remember, all that information that's going on inside the quantum computer is not measurable. So we have a circuit diagram piece that looks like this. And out we'll have a couple different states, the measurement states. Um, so if we were to say that psi is some superposition of alpha 0 plus beta 1, uh, this takes a qubit with the state psi uh, and then takes it into a classical probabilistic bit, basically exactly what you'd expect, some uh, some you know, complex conjugate alpha squared a percent of the times you're going to get, you know, the zero state and with the probability of, you know, the complex conjugate of beta squared, you'll get the one state. This is your basic bread and butter quantum mechanics, but you get classical computers. C naught is basically XOR except it keeps a copy of one of the inputs. Oh, classical would be a reversible. Q ah, I see. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, Admiral Entropy, for the win. Okay, let's keep going. Um, wait, did I finish that? Hold on a second. Oh yeah, so this takes a, uh, yeah, so it takes a state, takes a qubit with state sign and turns it into a classical probabilistic bet. Probabilistic bet. So you get some bit classically under some probability. Next comes some fun stuff. How about qubit copying? Can we copy qubits? Well, we just told you that we couldn't copy qubits. See? No. You may not copy qubits. How many times do I have to tell you this? So you can't copy qubits. Why? Well, let's start with some state psi. Let's set it as alpha 0 plus beta. And this is kind of relevant to what uh, Admiral Entropy is saying. Is it alpha? Or no, it's just A and B. Excuse me. A and B. Okay. And let's erase this because we're going to need it. Now, usually you could do, like, like uh, Admiral Entropy says, the XOR gate would keep a copy of it, and we don't want that. So let's apply a C naught gate, which is the equivalent in quantum computing. I'm just basically repeating <laughs> what Admiral Entropy says, uh, which is the equivalent to XOR. And let's see what happens if we can hang on to a copy. So if we take some C naught gate, so we're going to start with our state psi, okay? And we're going to have a direct product with a state zero, which basically means that now we have two qubits. And we're evaluating the two of them. The one qubit state side, the second qubit is a zero qubit. Okay, so it's it is exactly as you want it. We're gonna set we're gonna talk about the entire wave function of the um of the two of them, right? The initial state of the two of them, one zero. Okay. If we apply the C not gate to this original state, okay? So C not gate applies it to the state, and we get the following. Um 0 plus B11. One, one. Now, did we make it? This question. Is it psi psi? So this is like that meme with the butterfly. And it's like, is, is this psi psi? Right? That's what we have to figure out. I see what <laughs> um, so yeah, so then uh, is the psi psi. So let's find out what psi psi is and then see if we got it. So if psi psi, psi, so psi, psi is a squared, zero, zero, plus a, b, zero, one, plus a, b, one, zero, plus b squared, 1, 1. So is there any condition where we can make this the case? I mean, like, if this exists in any type of a's and b's, then sure. We can write this as a, as a copy, as two. Hi, NC. Good to see you. But the, me the, point, but the meme, the point is that it's clearly not the thing they're saying it is. So, okay, Blake, you do know I'm old, right? So firstly, I'm old. Second of all, I thought I did a good job because I'm like... I'm, I want to say that it is a copy, so we do the copy, and then we find out that it's not a copy, right? So it's old man. Score one for the old guy. 
Okay, now. <clears throat> where are we at? And <laughs> someone followed on the square one for the way. Das Toy, welcome to the channel. Thank you for the follow. Um, that's funny. Okay, now. Is there any combination of A and B that will get us this size state? This this size size, this extra size state? And it turns out, no. Well, think about it. I mean, like, okay, well, let's do a little, let's do a, a, a little bit of a, a circuit here, right? Just because. So the size state is going to equal, because we, we want to talk in circuits now. <clears throat> With this extremely hype music for quantum computing. Um, zero. It's just a control not gate. And then at the end we get a zero zero plus plus B one one. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, we can only, it should be clear now if you guys haven't seen, we can only, uh, get the A's and B's out. Or we can only get the zero zero and the one one state um, if you set either. Well, you have to set a b to zero. <clears throat> how do a b and equal zero? These are com these are part of the complex number, right? So how do you take how do you take one of the no complex numbers and set it equal to zero, right? Well, it's got to equal zero. So either a or b have to equal zero. So that's the that's completely different. Um, because if we were to set psi to zero, right? So say if we were to let b equal zero. So then we could let b equal zero. And then have we copied psi? Well, sure. But what did I say this was earlier? This is the this is the basis vector. This is a classical bit. You can treat that just like a classical bit, right? There's nothing wrong with this being treated as a classical bit. In fact, I even said that after you get the measurement, you're going to measure one of these two things. And what is that? That's the same thing as a classical as a classical probabilistic bit. So now it's it's fine to say that this is true and we can set b to zero. And it's fine to say that we could set a to zero so we get the state one. But it's not fine to set uh, both one of, or yeah, it's not fine if we want to preserve this superposition of states. There's no way to preserve a superposition of states uh, in a quantum computer. This is called and uh, Justin would love this because he's the one that brought this up a bunch. The no cloning theorem and is highly relevant in uh, black holes, in quantum information of black holes. So uh, if you've heard of the no cloning theorem, this is what we're talking about. There's not a process in this unitary scheme where we have some superposition of information such that you can preserve it. Um, and, and clone it. <laughs> okay. Now, what's next on our, our list of fun things? We already figured out you can't clone things. Oh, yes. Bell states. We're getting towards the end of the notes. <clears throat> We're in bell states now. Let's talk about bell states. The bell of the ball. Now explain it with Alice and Bob. Actually, Alice and Bob are going to make an appearance in... The next like five minutes or less <clears throat> bell states are the interesting states where we said that hey if you knew something about the one state you can infer something or one qubit pardon me if you knew something about the one qubit you can infer something about the other qubit that is the whole entanglement of qubits right if i if i but it's more than that you know a very specific thing about it namely like this ready so let's take a bell state so we're going to start with an x and a y bit that's it. that's all i'm going to say x and y bit it's going to run into a hadamard gate Remember, we started with the Hadamard gate. Then it's going to go into a controlled not gate. Okay? So we have our control. We have our target. And then out of this, we're going to get a B, X, Y. Now, what does this look like? Well, let's do an input. Input, output. You do these a lot in classical, in like logic and stuff, in classical computation. And we do them a lot in quantum computation a lot as well. So let's start with a 0, 0 in. Well, the zero, zero, the first zero is going to hit this Hadamard gate and get superimposed onto zero and one. And then it's going to be here. And the zero part of the Hadamard of the superposition is going to be fine. But the one part of this is going to change the target bit. So if this is zero, zero, then our out state is going to be some superposition of zero, zero plus one, one. 
times 1 over root 2. Now, I know we've been kind of doing this on the fly, so let me kind of show you the intermediate steps for just this one. So 0, 0 is going to come through here, and then our state here is going to be, um, you know, 0, probably not in the right order. I should probably try to do it in the right order. So after the Hadamard gate, we're going to have the 0 state here, but it's going to be in a direct sum with 1 over root 2 times um, 0 plus 1. Okay? Now, since this is all one qubit, then there's going to be, this zero is going to hit this control and nothing's going to happen to it. So we get that one over square root of two times the zero, zero. And then this one is going to hit this control and flip this. So the second part of that is going to be a one, one. Okay. So hopefully I've explained the process with the intermediate steps. Okay. So now we have that. So we hit the, the first bit, hits the Hadamard gate goes into a superposition, and then uh, we multiply it with a zero, and then the second, the second one's a one, so it's gonna hit the control and flip this, and that's what we get, okay? Larry, good to see you, how are you? <clears throat> okay, so let's do the next one. So now we have a zero one. Is it zero one's next? Yeah, zero one. So now it's the same thing is gonna happen. The zero is gonna go through, it's gonna get in a superposition, and now we're going to have, uh, it's only gonna be slightly different. We'll have the states zero one, plus one zero and one over root two. It follows the same logic of applying the gates properly and blah, blah, blah. And then we have one zero. That's going to be our input. And then our output's going to be zero, zero minus one zero all over one over root two. And then we have zero or we have our input as one, one. And then of course the Hadamard is going to adjust it appropriately. Uh, and we'll get the following one zero one over root two there we go <clears throat> okay so now this is our in and out table and it's just taking each of these states and applying the two gates to it one after another and it gets these very specific states where if we know something if we know one of the qubits we can infer something about what the other one is going to get like for instance if you measure, so take the zero, zero state. So say I give you the zero, zero bell state. But yeah, so the bell state's interesting, right? If I gave you the zero, zero state, <coughs> I should say if I gave you this bell state, if I said, hey, I prepared two particles and they're in this state, okay? They're in this bell state and you measured your zero particle. What can you tell me? It doesn't sound as abstract as you thought. No, it's not very abstract at all, I don't think. The only, I mean, it depends on what you want. Okay, so the only, well, there's one. Let's just finish this one. And then and then there's a very, I think, yes. If you measure a zero, what's the second bit going to be? It's going to be zero. Like every time, it's going to be zero. Anyways, so if you measure zero, you will know that the second qubit is zero. You don't have to measure it. You can measure one bit at a time. So you can measure one bit at a time. So you measure the first bit, you get zero. You know, you can infer that the second bit is zero. This goes into the thing about like, you know, oh, you get Alice and Bob and you give them tangle particles and you give one to Bob and one to Alice. And then we're going to do that right now, actually. It's very, uh, it's important. Um, so what we could say then is, uh, okay, well, let's, let's talk about how it works. Can we... Can we do quantum teleportation? And then I will say, the Legogen, it's, it's actually very practical, quantum computing, in my opinion, um, with the caveat that you have to let go of, the, of all of the information, which I think is a hard thing for people to do. Like myself. Um, I, I want to know what's happening at every stage in the quantum computer. But if you're okay with not knowing that, if you're okay with letting things, and when I say knowing the information, I mean all of the information. Like with a classical computer, you don't ever, you can just stop it anywhere, and it's not going to impact the quantum computation. But with a quantum computer, you need to go from the beginning to the end without measuring to take advantage of the quantumness of it. And then, uh, and if you don't, if you decohere, if you have take a measurement with the system, like having like losing heat to the system or something like that, then you might lose some of the information. You might lose some of the quantum computation and things like that so it's it's very practical as long as you're okay with not knowing some of the things that are going on inside uh but let's finish this we're on to the fun part the part that probably some of you have been waiting for 
and really the only thing you care about <laughs> and why you stood here <laughs> and waited quantum teleportation is it real how can it happen what do we do so here's the deal alice and bob are our friends our companions that have, have stuck around with us for a long time uh oh let me grab that and put it over here <clears throat> okay um alice and bob our friends our companions uh they're in they they each generate a bell state epr pair, or no they don't each they they do it together they're in a lab together they generate a bell state epr pair one of these situations okay one of those situations they generate that together okay uh and then <laughs> many years later bob is in hiding <laughs> this is what nielsen and Chang say it's really kind of amusing uh, bob is in hiding and alice needs to send bob information in the form of a psi qubit okay so she wants to send bob a psi qubit not a classical qubit or a bit <laughs> not a classical piece of information but a qubit she needs to send that to him um no they don't motivate why but they just say she needs to um she doesn't know what psi is okay you can't know what psi is because if you know what it is <laughs> admiral i hear you we're over today anyway so sorry um <laughs> hey slayer good to see you it'll be up uh it'll be up on youtube definitely bye admiral take care thank you for all your help um and if anybody does have any questions that I can't answer, Admiral is an expert on quantum computing stuff, so please hop in the Discord and ask away. He's very, very knowledgeable. Um, so, um, so how how can she send the the state sign to Bob? Can she accept this mission? She has to get it to him without actually going there, so she can send a. So what she'll have to do is send some classical information to Bob. Okay, that is what she knows she has to do. Can she, so she, can she send the state psi to Bob by sending Bob classical information? So basically, it, can she take psi with her, measure it, take it out of its quantum state, and you'll see how tricky this is, and then send psi off to, to Bob so that he can answer it? <laughs> i'm sorry i i move a lot i got a lot of energy for an old guy um and then i get home and i sit down on the couch and i can't move anymore so um and she can't copy psi so you might think hey your first instinct is to copy it a bunch of times copy it thousands of times figure out what psi is and then send that information to bob but you can't copy no cloning uh -uh. no cloning theorem and again by measuring it you ruin the state so here's what she's going to do Alice is going to do the following steps. She's going to interact with her qubit, okay? Then she's going to measure... Um, wait, what did I say? <laughs> okay, so she has a qubit that she's... Uh, she has a qubit that she has uh, entangled with Bob using it into an EPR state, one of these, the, the special states. And then she has another qubit, okay? She's going to interact psi with her qubit. So we have some psi, okay? Let's write this down. It's in the form of alpha zero plus beta one. And she can't know what this alpha and beta are, but she needs to get this information to Bob. She has a qubit. Um, let's just say it's a zero qubit, okay? So these are Alice's qubit. And then Bob has a qubit too. He has the second half of this qubit, okay? So now, <clears throat> let's look at a diagram. So we're gonna have three qubits. We're gonna have two with Alice and one with Bob. Oh, wait, hold on. I need to add some extra gates here. So we'll have a Hadamard. We'll have a measurement. We'll have another measurement. And then we'll have... Okay, so this is the... Yep, and then we'll have a C knot here. I'm setting this up for a reason. And then I'll explain what it is. And then we'll have all the way to down here where we have a two mystery qubits, or two mystery gates, excuse me. <clears throat> now, if, so this is the plan. This is what Alice's plan is. Alice's plan is to interact her qubit, this one right here. No, wait. Yeah, her qubit with psi, okay? And then measure her qubit in her possession. Okay, 
So she's gonna interact it, and then she's gonna yeah. So she's gonna interact it, and then she's gonna uh, and uh, put it in a super position, and then measure it. Um, <clears throat> she is going to measure out of her two qubits, either zero 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 one one zero or one one. Now you might think like, oh well, this is in. They're all. It's it's a basis question. Like, can you put it into a basis properly? And we talked about that in the first week, and the answer is always yes. You can put it into a correct basis, but it's gonna take a second. Do I have a mod who can work on Q? Uh, I don't want to miss any questions. Um, <clears throat> so if we can set up a state, so this is going to be the bell state, uh, B00, which is associated with this 00 state. Uh, this is just the example they used in the book. Um, what's going to happen now if we start sending uh, this stuff through the gate? Okay, So this is set up in a very specific way for a very specific reason. I think I can keep the in and out table. I think that'd be a good idea to do. No, I don't think I'm going to make it. We'll try and we'll see what happens. If I have to erase it, I will. But let's see where the state goes. So here we're going to have the state psi zero. Okay. <clears throat> and then we're going to evolve it past the C not gate. Okay. So let's stay, start with psi zero. This is going to be some state of three qubits. Now we're into three qubits. We've only ever done two qubits, so this is going to be a little bit tricky, but you can handle it, right? Zero, zero, plus one, one, plus beta times one. Am I at the edge? Oh, I am at the edge. I better come down here. One, zero, zero, plus one, one. Okay. So now we're at size zero, okay? And then I think we have to close the square parenthesis. And a, and a round parenthesis. Okay. And then let's just make this a, a nice beta. Now, this is the original state. This is all three qubits. So two of Alice's and one of Bob's. And. Oh, thank you, NC. Um, okay. And uh, <clears throat> then what's next? Okay, so a Alice sends her qubit. So she takes her qubit right here. And sends it through a C not gate. So if the size state is a zero, it goes through. If it's a one, it'll go. It will. It will change uh, Alice's target. Alice's qubit to a. Uh, it'll flip it. Whatever else to whatever it's not. Okay. So this Alice is a zero. So it will flip it to a one if the psi has a one in it, which we're gonna assume it does to some extent. So now we have psi one. Let's do it down a little bit more. So after it goes through here, then we're at the Psi 1 stage, okay? Psi 1 looks like this. 1 over the square root of 2 times alpha 0, 0, 0, plus 1, 1, plus beta 1, oops, I should probably go down, plus beta 1, 0, 0, plus 1, 1. Okay. So now, what did we do with the C not? Well, <clears throat> anything that was 0 was good out of Alice's qubit, but any 1 got flipped. Did I change? Did I mess something up? I did mess something up, didn't I? I did, I did, I did. Hold on. <clears throat> so this is now going to be 1, 0 and zero one okay so that basically meant that this is the qubit this is that's attached to psi so every time that this so this is zero and this is one so this one is going to flip alice's qubit so alice's qubit is, qubit is zero and one so it flips her qubit to one and zero okay so that's alice alice's qubit okay so now that's after the c mark gate c not gate, excuse me. So now we go through the Hadamard gate. So this is Psi 2. What's the Hadamard gate going to do? Well, we're going to get into another thing so that we can basically change basis and get out of... We're almost done. We got half a page. Get out of, the, of Bob's qubit. We want to leave Bob's qubit alone and get it separated. So what we're going to do is do a change of basis using a Hadamard gate. And that's going to do the following. So now we're at Psi 2. Psi 2 is going to be a one half. This is a bit longer. 0, 0. Wait. Nope. Sorry. 
That's the second half of it. We don't want to do the second half yet. Uh, alpha 1, or I'm sorry, alpha 0 plus 1. So now this is taking this bit and putting it into a, uh, applying the Hadamard to it. And then this part is going to stay the same. So it's 0, 0 plus 1, 1. And then plus beta. I am going to erase this in a second, but I want to get this up for just a hair too. Um, excuse me. Uh, so then we're going to put this one through a Hadamard gate. So it's going to change it into this, which is what we did in the beginning. And then this one of the square root two is turned to one half because of the Hadamard gate. It's going to now have four different states. So you expect it to be one half over instead of one over square root of two. Where am I? Uh, oh, minus one times one zero plus zero one. Okay. And then, of course, square bracket to close it off. So here we are. Now we have the long side two. Now, now we've been able to take this and apply a Hadamard gate to it so that we can get it into a different way. Now I'm erasing that because it's less relevant. And what is relevant is we want to see the last setup. So if we were to rewrite this, okay, now I'm not going to rewrite it like I did in the notes. So if you have the notes, you can see it rewritten. I'm not going to rewrite it. I'm instead going to rewrite the important part of this, right? That if Alice measures a zero, zero state, Okay, what's she gonna get? Well, the measurement for psi three, for psi three. So now we've gone past the measurements. Psi three, she's gonna measure zero zero state. What's the remaining state going to be? Well, the remaining state is gonna be whatever Bob's qubit's in. Okay, if Bob qubit, uh, Bob's qubit is gonna be in alpha zero plus beta one. So this is kind of really nice. Why is this really nice? Well, this is just psi. So if Alice measures zero, zero for her state, and she sends that information to Bob, Bob should know that he has psi. Bob's smart. Bob's taking quantum compu computations with physics O with me. He knows that if he applies the right gates, he knows what gates that she applied. <clears throat> and he knows um, what gates he has to apply, which we're going to get into in a second, because remember, this is Bob's qubit, so this is his business. He's got to figure out what to apply here. So if Alice measures 0, 0, that's great. Just send it to Bob. Bob knows um, <clears throat> Bob knows that it's going to get psi back, but there's a little bit of more information to that, too. I guess that's not fully correct. Let's, let's complete that and, and get it fully correct. What if she measures 0, 1? Then you're going to get alpha 1 plus beta 0. And again, this is just rewriting this in terms of getting these two bits by themselves, which we can do now because we get the Hadamard gate process. <clears throat> and then 1, 0. Psi of 3 is going to equal uh, alpha 0 minus beta 1. And then... 1, 1 is going to be, let's do a psi of 3 for consistency. Alpha 1 minus beta 0. Okay, so now we have all of Alice's states. So Alice is going to measure one of these when she collapses the uh, measurement on psi 2. And she's going to get psi 3 is going to remain. And then <clears throat> what, what, we, what, what, what can we do? How can Bob recover the information? Well, it turns out. The Bob is smart. He knows that if he applies an X and a Z state in just the right way, okay, an X and a Z state in just the right way, he doesn't even really need to know this stuff to know that he got psi. Like, he'll have to know one of them, right? He'll have to know, basically, Alice is going to measure this as a classical bit and send it to Bob. Bob will then know what to apply with X and Z in order to recover the correct state because he knows exactly what X and what Z to apply to this one to get back to this state. So if he gets a zero, zero, he knows he has psi. Let me read what, uh, let me read what, uh, they say. So I don't screw this up. I don't want to screw this up. <clears throat> okay. So once Bob has learned the measurement outcome, Bob can fix up his state recovering psi by applying the appropriate quantum gate. For example, in the case where the measurement yields zero, zero. Okay. Bob doesn't need to do anything. If the measurement is zero, one, Bob can fix up his state by applying the X gate. By applying the X gate, 
you just switch 0 and 1. Okay? By a, and he doesn't need to know this. He just knows that this is going to be true always. So if he gets 0 and 1, he just needs to apply the x gate. If he gets 1, 0, he needs to apply the z gate. Right? <clears throat> you're going to negate the second... Or you're going to negate the 1 state with the z state. Remember that? Or the z gate. Remember that? That was from... Uh, that was from last week. And then lastly, with this one, he needs to apply both Z and X gates if you get 1-1. One, one. So that's the cool thing. <laughs> so that's the cool thing, is you can take this state, you can take Psi. I, I, I entangle two particles, right? I send one with, one with Bob and one with Alice. Alice goes away. Alice needs to tell Bob a message with a third qubit. And she does it with Bob by setting up this exact state. And then Bob knows, based off of what Alice measure, measures, how to recover the size state without ever looking at it. That's the crazy thing. He doesn't need to know what psi is to use it, to get it, to receive it. It's information, it's information about alpha and beta that we don't need to know. We can't know, really. But he can use in this way. Which this turns out to be huge in error correcting code in, uh, oh, what's the other thing? Essential for, oh, noise, effects of noise. So you can get rid of noise in your quantum computer and also uh, for error correcting code. Now, there's a couple things. A, this did not travel faster than light. Why did it not travel faster than light? Well, because Alice cannot tell Bob any classical information faster than light. So somehow she has to phone to him Morse code or something, the information of the classical bit. Secondly, no, Psi was not cloned, okay? He doesn't get Psi in his qubit for free. Instead, this Hadamard gate allows us to rechange the bases into something else and measure just these two as opposed to measuring Bob's, beta as, uh, Bob's as well. That reclassification into a new basis gives us that ability to preserve Psi without cloning it. It's basically just saying, hey, I'll trade you. I'll trade you this piece of information for this one. And that's what we're doing. Um, okay. <clears throat> and that's it. I mean, I think that's a wicked cool piece of information to actually be able to transport psi a bit you can't know anything about, uh, about alpha and beta at least, to someone else without cloning it, without anything else. Uh, huge. What do you guys think? I think that was an exciting lesson.